Hey guys, it's Sarah from Just My Typewriter, and I'm back with another Typewriter 101 video. If you missed my last one in this series, I'm trying to go through the process of looking at buying your first typewriter and walking through the first time user through that process. If you want the crash course, the cram before the final video, I've got one of those as well. But in each of these videos, we're going into a little bit more depth about buying and using that first typewriter in your collection. I personally believe that typewriters should not be intimidating. I want everyone to have one. So to me, it doesn't matter why you buy your first typewriter, but I do want to make sure that as you get that first typewriter, there's a resource out there for you to figure out how to use that machine and how to keep it in your collection forever. <laughs> Stop it. Hey, so one question I get asked a lot here on YouTube and also on my typewriter Instagram, just at my.typewriter, is how do I use my typewriter? And that's a great question. When I first got my first typewriter, the Smith Chrono Corsair Deluxe from the 1960s, I just hit every button until I figured out what it did. But there are some basic principles you can learn about a typewriter looking at the old manuals and how other people use their typewriters to really make sure that you know how to operate your machine when you first get it. And again, kind of demystify the process of using a typewriter. So let's go through a little bit of basic typewriter anatomy. So for today's lesson, I'll be using a variety of machines to show you the basic layout of your first typewriter. Let's start with the keyboard. The QWERTY layout was actually designed for the typewriter, which is why the typewriter keyboard actually looks a lot like your standard keyboard. The spacebar is at the bottom of the keyboard and is often the same shade as either the body of the machine or the keys themselves. Above the spacebar are the typewriter keys. If you need to go back and fix a mistake or add a letter, you can actually use the backspace key. We'll go over fixing a mistake in a minute, but the backspace keys on a typewriter can vary between models. Some backspaces will have the word backspace on them, others will have arrows. They can be on either side of the keyboard depending on the make and model of the machine. This should take you back one full space at a time. You will also have a shift key on your typewriter. Sometimes these can be labeled and sometimes they are blank. They will usually be on both the right and the left side of your keyboard toward the bottom rows of keys. The larger of the shift keys on the left side is shift. You press this down while hitting a key to get your capital letters. Above this is a smaller key. This is your shift lock, or for you computer users out there, your caps lock. This is really helpful if you're trying to yell at your pen pal in a letter. Once pressed, it'll type every single letter in capitals. To disengage, you simply press the shift key. There's also a shift key on the right side of your keyboard, but no shift or caps lock. The next key is your tab key. Now, again, this will vary from machine to machine. Some are labeled, others are not. Some are keys, some are bars. You can also set tabs in your machine manually to adjust where this tab will travel. Above your keyboard are some other cool functions, including the color selector. Many machines have the option to use different colors of ink, and that's why so many typewriter ribbons have both red and black. On your typewriter, you can shift which side of the ribbon is being used to type. Often the color selector will feature dots of color to let you know which one you're typing in. Some older models will say lower and upper. Again, this can vary in location from machine to machine, but look for the colors. The white setting is actually called stencil and won't use any ribbon ink to type. In addition to be able to select the color you want, you can also select the direction the ribbon travels on a machine using the ribbon reverse. Some will have the selector on the front of the machine, others will have it hidden under the lid. This allows you to use your ribbon to one end in one direction and then reverse the direction of the ribbon in the way that it is being pulled so you can use it again on the other side. You can see here on this Remington how it shifts the direction the ribbon is being pulled when I flip the reverse. Here's something else you might see on a keyboard of your typewriter, the L, M, H lever or a plus and minus lever. This is actually called the touch control by Royal or the touch selector and it allows you to change the tension or weight of the keys. On some machines, this will be a lever on the keyboard. On others, it may be under the hood of the typewriter with a series of numbers. Others may have a knob on the side to adjust this tension. The difference may be minimal, but you might want to play with this and see which setting you're most comfortable using. We are now graduating past the keyboard. At the top of your machine, you'll notice this rubber roller that has a knob on each side of it. This is your platen. This is where we roll paper through. To move this section of the machine to start typing on the top left of the page, we use either the carriage return lever or a carriage release lever. The carriage return lever is a big silver arm that sticks out on the left side of the machine. This allows you to move the carriage to the right to start a line. This also acts as your enter button. When you click the carriage return lever, it'll move your page up by a line. 
and as you type, the carriage will travel left. To start on your next line again, you'll use the carriage return lever to move the entire carriage back over to the right. If you are typing and need to move the carriage again, you can use the carriage return lever or the release lever. There is a carriage release lever on each side of the carriage. By pressing these levers, you can slide the carriage to anywhere on the line. The carriage release levers are usually below the knob you have on each side of the carriage. These are called your platen knobs. They are attached to your platen and roll the platen. This allows you to physically roll paper through the machine. You can also have these knobs to roll your paper through a line at a time or several lines at a time. They can roll a page both forward and backward. But what if you need to type your final history report in double space instead of single to get that APA format on point? Here is your line spacer. You can change the spacing on your page with the shift of this lever. Machines can vary from one to two to three line spacing. Look for the lever on the left side of the machine near the carriage arm that has a series of numbers. This will be your line spacing. Speaking of APA formatting, let's talk margins. The margin is the white space on the edge of your page. You can set this on your typewriter as well as adjust it for different widths of paper. Now and again, these will vary machine by machine. On these portables, you'll notice little tabs sticking out of the top plate of the typewriter. These are your margins. Where they land is where your paper will stop typing to create a margin. You can typically press down on these and move them to change your margins. On this standard Underwood 6 from the 1930s, the margins are set up front. Again, they look like little knobs that you can move around to create your margins. When you type and hit the margin, the carriage will stop advancing. You will need to use one of your carriage levers to move it onto the next line. Let's say you've got one more little letter left in the word on that line. You can actually release the margin to fit the rest of that word using your margin release lever. This will be on your keyboard and will typically be marked by mar rel or margin release or even a set of arrows. When you click this button, the margin is released and you may type past it. Quick tip. If you get a typewriter and it doesn't move, one thing that it may be is that your margins aren't set out. To keep a machine from having the carriage move all over the place, you can set your margins both to center. Make sure your margins are set out away from the center when you go to use your machine, otherwise it'll be locked in place. Some portables also feature locks, which lock the carriage in place so when your typewriter is set in its case, the carriage doesn't move and get busted. These can hide all over the place. Once engaged, the carriage is entirely locked. Here's one on the front of my Remington Travel Writer. They can sometimes be on the side of the machine or even under the left side of the carriage. They will lock your machine's carriage in place. If your machine is stuck and it's not the margins, check for a carriage lock. Let's load some paper in this and give it a try. Here's a tip with loading paper. When you roll paper through, you want it to be upside down and facing away from you because when you roll it through the machine, it'll turn right side up and face you. So here's a page with some letterhead. I'm going to turn it upside down and face the letterhead away from me. I will then slide it in behind the platen into the paper tray. Then I will start to roll the platen knobs. There's a set of rollers underneath the platen that'll grip this paper and roll it through. Once I have it rolled through to my desired starting point, I can use my carriage return lever to move the page over and start typing in the left-hand corner. There is a bar across the top called the paper baler. You'll want to rest this on top of your paper to hold it down in place as you type. While typing, I can use all of my previously discussed functions to adapt my typing, like line spacing, like colors of ink. I can even change the type and size of paper. Here I will insert a smaller and thicker piece of paper. Because this paper is not as wide, I will shift the right margin so that it matches where I would like to end on the page. Once you're done, you can roll the paper out of the typewriter and boom, now you're using your typewriter. There are also a few cool typing tricks. For example, your number row keys should have symbols across the top. Just like on your computer, you can hold down shift and use them. You might notice that the apostrophe is above the eight on your typewriter. To type a word with an apostrophe, you'll have to use the shift key and the eight. Wait, my typewriter doesn't have a one key. Don't worry, most machines pre-1960s don't. To type one, you will actually just use the lowercase l. And no one key means no exclamation point. How else will you express the excitement of using your typewriter? To make an exclamation point, just type a period, hit backspace, and then add the apostrophe, which is shift eight. There are machines that have one keys with exclamation points. They just might be of a newer vintage. What if I mess up? On a manual typewriter, you don't always get to fix a mistake, but you have some options if you do. You can always cover up your mistake with a whiteout or type over it. 
Or you can also try the type over method, which is where you go back over where you messed up, type over it with X's. This covers up your mess and also allows you to start the word over. It also kind of adds that rustic look and can show your writing process. Now these are not all of the parts of your typewriter and different machines are going to have different functions and different ways to do the same processes depending on the age and the model, the make, the country of origin for that typewriter. There's a lot of variety when it comes to typewriters, but almost every single typewriter you see is going to have some sort of variation on some of these same basic parts on a machine. If you have questions about typewriters or have ideas for other typewriter videos in this 101 series, please feel free to leave me a comment. If collectors are out there and have suggestions for newbies, leave them in the comments below as well. If you're interested in more typewriter content, I've got more videos on this YouTube channel, and I also have an Instagram at just.my.typewriter. I want to thank you all so much for watching today and remind you that you're just my type, writer. There, now you're quiet. Do you want to show all the people your haircut? Say hello. I got a haircut so I could be in this video. There you go. Does that smell interesting to you? Oh, oh no, uh-oh. Dog on the loose. Oh, okay, we're putting you down now.